guys, it's Kate. Welcome to GoPro into Analysis 101. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Guys, today's topic is uh, three ways that uh, the children de are coping, are coping with the COVID nurses' antics. Three ways that the children are coping with the COVID nurses' antics. This is something I've observed with my kids as they're, you know, getting older, like certain things, certain ways they deal with uh, the COVID nurses or respond to them. Uh, keeps changing, of course, with age, you know. One thing that I observed in the in the beginning, or you know, when, when they were much younger, was anytime the covert nurses will call on the call them on the phone or whatever, they will answer the phone. And most of the time, they will start. They will come to where I am. You know, they come to like if I'm in the room and they pick up the phone. And most of the time, I like not to stay around them because I'm trying not to, you know, just in case I end up saying something. Um, I don't, I don't want that, so I stay away. They, they, whenever they call, I'm somewhere else, and they're somewhere else. But what I noticed uh, earlier on was they will come to the room where I am, you know, and if I try to leave and they are signaling to me to, you know, stay there. So I figured this was something, you know, it gives them some kind of comfort that they're around me. It gives them some, they're not really, because most of the time he calls and he's yelling about something. Or, there's something that he's going to complain about. That's that's for sure. Uh, he might not just be yelling, but there's something that he's going to get at them for. He, be it school, be it something, whatever, you know, so... Because of that, they stay, you know, they come around me and say, I figure that's okay. This is how they, you know, they're handling this. So whenever they call or whenever he calls, you know, I'll just be in the corner and hold on to my lips and not say anything, you know, because I figure this is giving them comfort that I'm around. So whatever it is that he's saying, they are able to not panic, not be anxious and, you know, they respond. So I figure that's one of the ways they're handling it. One thing they are currently, and second thing they're currently uh, doing now that they are much older is that, they don't bother answering the phone because most of the time they don't want to say anything to him because of uh, they know whenever he calls, it's always going to be some kind of BS. So they tend to ignore the phone uh, whenever he calls or they don't hear it because most of the time anyway, in the beginning, it was either me or if my mom was visiting, that would say, oh, the phone is ringing. I think your dad is calling go ask. But other than that, they, they don't go to the phone. So I stopped doing that, obviously. And I, I think I mentioned it in one of my videos. I, that is not your job to police what's going on. So I stopped doing that. Um, so now, anyway, this is what they do. He will call. They don't really answer the phone. But however, what I noticed was, like, the, the weekend that they're about to go visit him, um, like around Thursday, which he usually calls Thursday, Friday, and then he come get them. That phone call on Thursday, they will answer that one. <laughs> On Thursday, they will answer that phone call. So I noticed this pattern, you know, happening. They will answer that phone call. And, you know, of course, they cause the question, where have you been? I've been calling, blah, 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 blah. And they always have some answer with school or whatever. So when I was asking my son, I said, you, you guys are talking to my, you answered the phone today. He's like, yeah, I'm going over there for two days. I just want to be, I just wanted to be calm. This is like, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's almost like throwing a dog a bone because they figured on which... It, it works for them because by the time they get off the phone, he's laughing about something or they're laughing about whatever it is. It's like everything is calm now. So I'm like, wait a minute. This boy is trying to prepare the way <laughs> over there before he gets over there, you know. So it's almost like, to, okay, let's calm him down, throw the dog in, uh, uh, throw the, uh, the dog a bone so he will be calm. And then when they come back, the same thing happens where they don't, they don't answer the phone. They don't talk to him until... The next time they're gonna visit. So this is something they used to. Uh, I don't think they used to handle their covert narcissist uh, antics. Uh, the third one is they don't even bother asking for anything. It doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter how whatever. It, it doesn't matter. They don't they bother to ask. And even you know, hearing them having a discussion about something, maybe maybe it's a visit, uh, some kind of something going on in school. Or some of that stuff that they're like, no, you know, means it's not gonna come or whatever. So that let's not bother. So they don't even factor him with anything. It doesn't matter. It could be like a five dollar uh, game card or whatever. They don't ask. They don't bother. They don't talk about it. And even if he promises something, they never follow up with um. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Which is what they you know they would do to me. Like if I promise them something, they're like, oh, mom, mom, you said it. Said you said that. But with him, no. They don't, it's almost like the expectation, expectation is low, which is that way. If they don't expect anything from him, uh, they're not going to be disappointed. They're not going to be sad. Like this is how they're handling it because they know this person is unreliable. It doesn't matter. 
you know, what they promise to say, whatever it is, like, it, 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 it's, there's no point. <laughs> there's no point. So expectation is, is zero, you know. So I don't know if you guys observe this with your children, but this is kind of like what I'm, you know, I'm seeing as, you know, as they're getting older, like how they handle different things, you know, with him. Uh, you know, the covert narcissist is, you know, it keeps, it keeps changing. And it's not in the kids making it okay for them because what my kids finally realize that it doesn't matter that, you know, they, this is what the court system says. It's, you know, it's going to still going to go about it to visit. It seems like they're trying to find a way, you know, to uh, get through with this, if you will. <laughs> All right, guys, get a hold of your mind and help them to fall into place. Please like and share. Take care.